Growth Through Grief podcast, where we interview individuals just like you dealing with their own journey from loss to growth, along with mental health experts, growth guides, all with the purpose of helping you heal better, improve mind, body, and spirit, and find your new purpose from the loss and the tragedy that you have experienced. Hi, I'm Tom Pasello. I'm your host, growth evangelist, founder of Growth Through Grief, as well as being a fellow widower, having lost my beautiful bride of 19 years, Judy, some five years ago. Today, I have a really special guest. His name is Tim Ohai. He's of Kupu Solutions. He's a strategic effectiveness expert and coach, and that's how our paths originally crossed in the business world. Uh, but he is also, as I came to know, a fellow widower, having lost his wife, Diana, in uh, 2020. Uh, he's now a single father of two. He's got a son, 22, and a daughter, 20. Tim, almost the same age as my two. Um, Tim is also a man of strong faith and purpose, along with having an educational background in behavioral science and also in psychology. So we'll have plenty to talk about with Tim today. We're here to learn about Tim's journey from grief to growth, his own journey in that, and tap his experiences and expertise, expertise for insights and inspiration. Tim, welcome. Hey, aloha. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. I want to know how the story began with you and Diana, if you'll take us back a number of years. Yeah, well, so you got to go back to the 90s. Um, so technically, we met in the 80s. We met um, my freshman year of college was her sophomore year of college, and we overlapped for a semester, and then she left the school. So Mm -hmm. I know her brother and her cousin, and, and, and we have a lot of similar friends back then, but she, we didn't really know each other. And so fast mm -hmm. forward, um, I'm, I'm originally from Hawaii. That's why I said aloha. I'm originally from Kona, Hawaii. And um, she wound up moving to Kona years later. And uh, we had some good mutual friends who were like, you guys need to meet. I'm like, oh, no, no that's cool. Thanks. Yeah. And because I've never been a big fan of like people being pushed together and all that. And... Uh, she was getting the same kind of pressure from, from, from not only our, our friends, but we were both teachers. So I was teaching elementary school and she was teaching preschool mm -hmm. and the families from the same, you know, had their, they had their kids in both schools were like trying to say, Hey, go, you should meet each other and you would be a great fit. We're like, well, you know, thank you. And then it turned into, no, no, you guys should really meet. You guys could like, oh, shush. And then they're like, so I remember one person just said, no, this is like marriage quality. I'm like, whoa, whoa, back off. So we actually, we met, right. And then we didn't, we just kind of, there was, and she was not interested. And so it was actually, um, we were, uh, I, I used to run, um, I was one of the uh, main folks doing security for the Ironman in Kona. Okay. And um, she had volunteered one year and was on the finish line security team. So I'm, you know, it's late at night. It's a 24 hour shift. You're there, you know, the night before making sure the race gets kicked off and running everything. And you're at that point at, at, at night, you're, you're waiting for midnight or actually 1230. So the athletes who are, you know, straggling in, and so there wasn't a lot of activity and I just sat and just started talking and we were just, it was nice. It was pleasant. So I, I was like, huh. And then fast forward, uh, I met her in the grocery store hmm. and like legit was walking down uh, aisle three. I'll never forget walking down aisle three and she comes around the corner and I see him like, oh, and she almost did a double take. She's like, oh no, this guy. And, <laughs> uh, and it's like, no, I'll talk to him. You know, he was nice. Maybe, you know, so we started talking and for the first time there, there was like an energy there was, it was like, huh, this is really nice. And then we wind up going and checking out in the same line and not planned, but then she was like a person in front of me. So I'm like, Oh, she's right. We're like, there was somebody between us. So I just kind of turned and I was looking at candy bars and magazines and just trying to, you know, stay, stay in my space. And she found me like, Hey, and so we let the guy between us go and we were just chatting and it turned into, um, Hey, come over to a barbecue on Saturday. And I had already been invited. She didn't know. Um, and so I was like, yeah. And, and I got there and she, uh, showed up after, cause she was working weekends at a different job and she, um, came in and it was one of those deals where all of our married friends, it was one of those kind of parties. Mm -hmm. And we were the only two single people at the party. <laughs> and I was sitting in the backyard, um, 
on a big, big blanket on the grass by myself. And she comes up and goes, where do I sit? And her friend's like, oh, Tim has space. And she almost went back inside the house. She goes, this is stupid. I'll go. So she sat down and, and we just started talking. And the best part, there was no pressure on us. Nobody was yeah. trying to push us. Oh, it was just, good. hey, what's there? And next thing you know, the party's over. Everybody's left. We're still talking. Um, our friends who own the house come out and go, hey, I'm going to go buy some ice cream for dessert. Do you want some? And she, Diana's like, yeah, I'll go. And so she takes off. And then I go to my buddy and go, okay, all right, who is this gal? <laughs> and my friend Brian's just like, dude, that's the girl. That's the one we've all been telling you you should meet. And I'm like, all right, I've been an idiot. And yeah, it just kind of took off from there. Man, sometimes we need that total guidance from friends and from above, right? To, to find the right one. Yeah. How serendipitous. I mean, you have crossed how many times before eventually kind of got there. And you guys built a beautiful life together. Tell us a little bit about that. So we got married in 99. Um, I got pregnant on our honeymoon. So we went from a family of one <laughs> to a family of three in nine months. Um, wow. I wasn't ready for that. Yeah. Um, so my son was born in 2000 and at the time I was a school teacher and she was a school teacher and, and it was like, it was in, in Hawaii and there's no money in that. So mm -hmm. we were looking at, do we, do we stay here and each of us have two jobs and maybe hang out on Sundays? Um, or, or what? And, um, a lot of prayer. Um, and a lot of just soul searching and just realize, okay, let's move to California. I didn't want to move to California, but that's where her family was. And my mom had sold her house in Hawaii and moved to the same Bay area. So we moved to the Northern California area. Um, I looked at some teaching stuff. I was even offered a vice principal position at a private school, but the economics just weren't there. And I was just like, nah, I just, so I landed in sales. Hmm. And no intention ever of doing that, but was working um, as a sales coordinator. And then I was doing regional marketing strategy and helping with business development. I was doing all this stuff, supporting everything from, you know, major key accounts to just local opportunity stuff and running reports and all with this intention of, I want to get into training. So I did really well there and they were going to make me a sales rep out of Reno, but then the guy who was in Reno, who was supposed to take a promotion of management, didn't take it. He just wanted to stay in Reno. So I, I was like, I, I need to make more money. Cause at that mm -hmm. point, then my wife was pregnant with our second, mm -hmm. our daughter. And, um, I, my boss was super gracious and my sales manager, he was like, look, you're a great guy. I knew